All right, welcome back to the Das Food Show. That's what we're calling it from now on, but not really. It's just I I didn't have another intro, but uh, so I missed a couple of uploads due to due to life getting a little crazy. Uh, but I'm I'm back, and we should be back on the regular schedule going forward now. But to make up for lost time, I I thought I would uh, I I thought I'd do you a real solid. You know, my, my lovely viewers. Um, so if we could get some some applause going in just a moment. Uh, <clears throat> today we're going to do a Survivor Tier List. So let's let's clap for that. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good stuff. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, so let's go through our categories. Our category up top is Best Boy. Only, only one person can go up there, and I just want to—I just want to point out here. I did not spell it like that because it is current year. It is current year. We don't do that anymore. I'm sorry to get heated. Uh, to go to the next one, we have the best of the rest. These are uh, high quality characters that are just not—they're not the very best character, but they're definitely in contention for it. They're up there. Next, we have underrated gems. You know, the survivors that um, you don't think of when you think like, hey, that'd be a really good one to main. But maybe you should give them another thought. The 50-50 picks. They might be toxic, you know, pieces of uh, guano. Or or they might be really sweet and they might be really kind. And they're just playing these characters for a, a personal reason. And, you know, it, it really is 50-50. You know, it's, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not willing to say they're all bad yet. Next up, we have gutter creatures. Let's hear it for gutter creatures. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, yeah, so the gutter creatures are the worst of the worst. You know, you don't get a... You, you don't have to try to find humanity within these gutter creatures because it's not there. And lastly, we have my uh, my personal favorite category, which is uh, David Tapp. Yeah, I'll clap for Tapp. I'll clap for Tapp. Uh, no word yet on who's going to be in that category, but there is something very important to put out there, right? David Tapp's category is at the bottom. Uh, it, I, I just have to point out that that was only because it didn't really fit with the flow of the rest of the chart. If I had to put it in terms of uh, where I like, in terms of like, right? Because Best Boy is the one I like the most, and then Gutter Creatures are the ones I like the least. Uh, Tap would be up there with underrated gems, right? So... You know, we'll see. We'll see where everybody goes. This is uh, <clears throat> an unofficial playlist. Playlist? Wow. This is an unofficial tier list. This is not... And I feel this is very important. This is not saying who you should main based off of their perks. This is not me saying... Oh, this character right here has fantastic perks. You should use them. This one has bad perks. Don't use them. No, that's not what's happening here at all. What this is, is we are measuring PPs here. And the bigger the PP, the higher up on the list. The smaller the PP, the lower on the list. Uh, I make the rules. That's how this is going. So if you are willing to turn your brain off and just accept my knowledge, please let us go. And let us start with the best boy category. So the best boy category... He's going to, uh, that's going to be Jeffrey Johansson. Uh, Jeff, Jeff goes up at the very top. Numerous reasons, numerous reasons. Uh, he has tattoo sleeves, which, uh, off the top of my head, only Kate also has a tattoo sleeve, and hers is a half sleeve, so <laughs> pitiful, pitiful. Uh, no, not a half sleeve. She has one tattoo sleeve, but then the other arm is bare. That's what it is. Uh, so Jeff, Jeff has the body art. Uh, I, the body art's very cool. He has great taste in music. He's a metalhead. He has got the dad bod to end all dad bods, which is just lovely. Uh, and then, you know, his perks, which again, we're not going off viability. His perks are kind of dickish to the killer. So that's funny to me. I find that funny. Uh, so Jeff is a pretty easy, easy chance, uh, easy choice for best boy. So, uh, let's good, good job, Jeff. Good job, Jeff. I'm proud of you, Jeff. Next up, we move on to the best of the rest. And when it comes to the best of the rest, I think this is where we're going to <laughs> run into some controversy. Because 
there are people who really want to see their survivor listed high up, but they, they knew they weren't going to get Best Boy because they knew I was going to give that to Jeff. If you watched any of my streams, you knew that was going to Jeff. Uh, so, if they're not in Best of the Rest, that means the best they can hope to be is underrated. It's a slippery slope. Let's do it. Let's let, let's just say who's in the best of the rest. And if you actually disagree with me, like this video so I know. And and then I will take that uh, into consideration. So best of the rest, number one, Dwight Funfield. This guy, this guy right here. Uh, some people would want to put him in 50-50 because they'd be like, oh, I, I have faced a toxic Dwight in the past. Yeah, me too. Doesn't matter. Still Dwight. Still Dwight. Still love him. Dwight is, uh, uh for, forget Trapper, forget Trapper. Dwight is the mascot for this game, and don't you ever forget it. Next up, we have uh, Ace Visconti, the best dresser in the game. And, um, yeah, I, oh, 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 oh. If you don't like Ace, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, Ace adds something to this game that nobody else has. He has pizzazz. He is the pizzazz choice. Uh, how many aces have you seen with the leopard print shirt? There's a reason for that. Because that's what this game needed. Uh, so Ace easily, easily secures his spot up here. Alongside Bill. My name is Bill. Next up we have Steve the Dream Harrington. The Dream? The Hair. Steve the Hair Harrington. You know what's funny is I had to do this a few times because I kept calling him Steam the Dream. Uh, and then uh, I finally get it right and that's not even, it makes no damn sense. A anyway, Steve is easily, out of the two Stranger Things characters, he's he's the easy choice. Uh, I, I once had a viewer tell me they thought I looked like Steve. I don't personally see it, but that guaranteed his spot. In the best of the rest! <laughs> Unbiased. Oh, I'm not biased at all. Uh, next up, we have Yui Kimura. Yui is... I almost I almost put her in underrated because when she came out, I was like, oh, we're going to see so many Yui's. And I, just, I don't feel like I've seen that many Yui's. So uh, I, don't, I don't know where the weaves are out there, but my dudes, you got to play some more Yui. That's... <laughs> play more Yui. Do it. Uh, next up, we have Felix Richter. Uh, Felix is not on this tier list, unfortunately. Uh, so, so Premiere Pro, put him in there. There we go. Very lovely. Look at that Felix picture. Look at Felix go. Wow, he's definitely here with us. Uh, next up, we have the underrated gems category. And this is the one where I'm going to lose some people. This is the one... Wait, I'm, I'm gonna have some people turn on me. Uh, namely because this is the one where I'm a little uncertain because basically everybody in the underrated gems category was in the best of the rest category and then I decided to cut them into two so that I could make a case for why you might not be giving some of these the love they deserve. Because I feel like all of them in the best of the rest are pretty pretty widely understood as being community favorites. These deserve some more loves. Let's go. Let's go. Oh dear, oh dear. Number one, Quentin! I know, I know! If anybody was made for gutter creatures, it's him. But here's the thing, gutter creatures is for how you act, not how you look. So does he look like a little hobgoblin? Yeah, he sure does. Do I wish he looked like the actor from the film who is actually handsome? Yeah, I really, really do. But does any of that factor into his ranking here? <laughs> no. No, it does not. It does not, and it never will. So, in my experience, Quentin players, they tend to be lovely. They tend to be very objective-oriented. Uh, let's not forget that uh, Yerv, maybe the underrated gem of streamers, is a Quentin main. Uh, so, so that alone should probably get Quentin up here. I don't see that many Quentins, but you know what? I wish I saw more. Good for you, Quentins of the world. Keep going. Keep doing your thing! Next up, we have... Where is he? Adam Francis. Adam Francis is probably my third or fourth favorite character. He should have been in the best of the rest, if not up there in the best boys. But I put him in underrated gems because I see almost no Adams. I do not come across Adams. And when I play Adam, I don't have people actually comment, Hey, 
I'm so glad you are playing Adam. That is so nice of you. Oh, hey, look, we got an Adam. I don't get that, but I do get that when I play Jeff, when I play Ace, when I play Steve. So clearly people are not appreciating Adam enough and I will not stand for it. I'm sitting down. I'm sitting down until you give Adam the love he deserves. Adam is fantastic. Y you just, you just, just, just wake up, sheeple. Next up, we have, uh, we have Ashley J. Williams. Another one who, hmm, just based off of, uh, based off of the act, act, based off of the awesomeness of the character, he should easily be in the best of the rest, if not the best boy. The Evil Dead franchise is amazing. The show exists. And, I, I mean, I just... Bruce Campbell is as cool of a celebrity as exists. Evidenced by the fact he actually came in and did voice work for a game where the survivors do not have voice lines. <laughs> I, I just... I, I knew. I knew when they added Ash. <clears throat> I knew when they added Ash. He was not going to be a very common pick. I was pretty certain of that. And lo and behold, it has not happened. I remember there being disappointment in the community when they announced Ash, which went to show me how little this community knows about horror. I mean, sincerely, sincerely, I don't want to go off on a whole anti Dead by Daylight community thing because there's a lot I like about this community. But every time a potential killer or survivor, uh, but it's usually killers, Ash is kind of the exception here, uh, is teased from classic horror, people always go like, Nobody, nobody has watched Candyman. Who, who's watched, who's watched Hellraiser? Like, there is more to horror than Freddy, Jason, Leatherface, Michael, and Ghostface. There's more to horror than the Slash Street Boys, I promise you. And Ash is a good example of that. Ash is a fantastic character. I am, if nothing else... It makes the game a thousand times better for me to have Ash in here. I think it's an awesome, awesome thing. Uh, I, I I just, I wish I saw more Ashes. I really, really wish I saw more Ashes. But yeah, you know, whatever. And you know, on the subject of really cool characters, licensed characters who don't get their due, let's put Cheryl Mason up here, man. Why? Cheryl, I think, lost a lot of people because of the confusing legendary skin situation. Where each legendary skin changes their name and people are like, so wait, is it, is it a different person? Oh, is it a different person? Or is it like a persona? Or, you know, I, I understand that. But Cheryl is actually a really cool character. And also, I don't run into that many toxic Cheryls, man. I, maybe it's just me. I don't I don't run into that many toxic Cheryls. But, uh, uh I, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I, I'm really, I'm really just not sure. But, uh. That's that's the last of the underrated gems. So if your character's not in this list, make sure you go down, leave a like and comment, and let me know. Um, you know, and maybe even share it with your friends just to really let them know how angry you are. But uh, next up, we're going to change how we do these because I, it's going to be a reveal of who is a 50-50 pick, who is a gutter creature, and who is David Tap. So uh, with this one, we're just going to go down. You can see the list. You can see we have from Meg to Zarina here. We have the rest of the survivors. Uh, we're just we're just gonna go on and we're we're gonna we're gonna add some. Uh, we're we're gonna do them one by one. So starting with Meg, where does Meg go? Meg goes to gutter creatures. Psych! Not really. She goes 50-50 picks. I know you wanted Meg to be a gutter creature. In fact, you probably clicked on this wanting all of the original four, except for maybe Dwight, to be a gutter creature. However, in my experience, Meg is kind of the newbie choice. And I have played with a ton of baby Megs, a ton of really sweet Megs, uh, and also some Megs straight out of hell who, yes, are gutter creatures, and you know who you are. But, overall, the numbers do not support her being a gutter creature. I did the math, so you don't have to. Meg no gutter creature. Meg 50-50 pick. Good Meg. Uh, same goes for Claudette. Claudette, uh, oh, they put her, hey, the list has a mind of its own. <laughs> uh, mm, mm, Claudette, 50-50. And again, I know, I know, I know, you think, eh, sorry for the chair creak, I'm a heavy lad, but uh, you think back to your experiences with Claudettes, 
and you say, ah, Blendettes, they are gutter creatures. But you know, I have actually known a fair share of people who play Claudette with the sole purpose of improving the uh, the image people have of Claudette. Uh, people who want to people who want to go out and they want to change your mind about Claudette. And I appreciate that. And you know what? It's worked for me. So uh, one of one of my dear friends, a fellow streamer, Master Myers, she always plays Claudette. And she plays in a very, uh, very, very kind style. And it seems like there's a bit of, there's a bit of a movement. It's a movement to uh, get some, some, uh, some love for Claudette rather than just toxicity. So I can appreciate that. For sure, for sure, Claudette, 50-50 pick. Good for you, Claudette. Next up, we have Jake Tap, who is going to go in 50-50 as well. Except no, he's not, because he is our first gutter creature. Let me tell you about Jake Tap. Jake Tap. Oh dear, I'm just so ready to get to the David Tap category. Uh, no, 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 but his name is Jake Park. Jake Tapper. That's CNN. That's a that's an anchor. Uh, that's where I was getting that. Uh, Jake Park is maybe the gutteriest gutter creature of them all, if not for a few others who are just as bad, if not worse, but also just as bad. Jakes do not play this game to have fun. They play. The, they are the dementors of Dead by Daylight. They're just there to suck the joy out of anybody else. They, uh, there, there was uh, nobody worse, man. Nobody worse. These Jakes. They must be stopped. They must be stopped. There is no love for Jakes unless it's Cowboy Jake, and then we reassess. Uh, if they all played Cowboy Jake, he might even move up to a fifty-fifty pick. I, but I, I don't think I can do any higher. Hey, but he's 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 a gutter creature. He's just he's a gutter creature, man. Next up, next gutter creature, Nia, Nia Carlson. Now, some might make the case about Nia that they make about Claudette. They might say, "Wait, there are people trying to change the perception," and I agree with that. I hear that, but to them, I say it's not enough. It's not enough people. Hey, Nia's are the type, man, because she has so many neon clothing options. Because Noob3, who by the way, I like Noob3, this is not shade at a much larger and much better creator, I, I, nothing but love for Noob3, but they watch Noob3 do his Once Upon a Toxic series and they're like, oh well he's, he's, he's a Nia main, I'll, I'll do that and I'll go, I'll go pwn some killers man, it'll be poggers. No, they can't do it, they can't do it and they're, they just end up being dicks, they just be dicks, they just be dicks and I don't like it, uh, yeah, you know, that's, um, uh, no, no, Nia, you deserve your place as the gutter creature. I'm glad Salmonation put you uh, put you as the entity because it's, it's what you deserve, you creature. Next up, we have another gutter creature with Lori Strode. And let me tell you, there is no greater divide between how a character acts in the licensed property they come from and how the community has decided to make them act in Dead by Daylight than Laurie Strode. Laurie Strode, in the original Halloween, was a very kind, very loving, very sweet person. She was a little bookish, a little shy, but when push came to shove, she was braver than she ever knew, and she beat back that boogeyman. That's not what she does in Dead by Daylight. No. No. Now, in Dead by Daylight, for whatever reason, and I know the reason, Laurie's feel invincible. Lori's feel bold. They feel very brave. They go into it assuming they're Michael and the killer is Lori, so to speak. They are arrogant beyond belief. And there are two reasons for this. Those two reasons are called decisive strike and objective obsession. And hell, even if you want to factor in Soul Survivor, which is a perk that re 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 rewards you for letting your teammates die, behavior geared this character... To be the worst. To just be the worst type of teammate. I can't stand Lori's. I don't like seeing them on my team. And I hate seeing them when I'm the killer. If you bring objective obsession. You're the worst of the worst. If you bring decisive strike. You're doo doo. Get better at the game. You're doo doo. No more wholesome food. This is toxic food here. Because I'm sinking to your level. You have won. I hate you, Lori. I hate you so much. Unless it's in the movies. In the movies, she's fantastic. Some of the movies. 
in the game, she, uh, you know what? Let's go into the water. You are the gutteriest gutter creature. Good job, Lori. This is what you deserve. <laughs> Next up, we have David Tap, who is uh, going to go in the David Tap category. Hey, hey look at that. We did it. We, uh, we have uh, David Tap in the David Tap category. And let me, let me explain this one, right? Let me explain it. Unless you are one of the 12 David Tap mains, right? I'm going to posit that you neither have a strong reaction of positivity nor negativity towards this character. They are there. Maybe you like them. Maybe you don't. You're not really sure how you feel. Because you don't see that many of them. And when you do... It, 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 there's just not much... There's just not much to it. It's kind of like, oh, look, a tap. There goes a tap. There's a David tap. So he gets his own category. Uh, if I if I had to lean one way or the other, I would say... I would say I generally like David's, but that's not really for me to say. How do I feel about David Tapp? He's David Tapp, so good job, David. Good job. I'm, ve I'm very proud of you. You got your own category. Next up, Kate Denson goes in the 50-50 picks. And again, she's kind of... Uh, She's kind of like Lori, where they designed her for toxicity. Not with her perks, though. And maybe that's... Let's, let me let me put this out there. By making her the obvious, like, hot girl character, right? Because that's what they did with Kate. That's what they were obviously going for. They were going to, they were going to welcome in a lot of people who wanted to feel superior in some way. So they played the hot girl. But the difference is they gave her perks that aren't actually all that toxic. So I think enough normal people played her. And, you know, they made her a country singer. Country folk, man, they're just the salt of the earth. Good for them. I have played with plenty of non-toxic Kates. Some people just like the character, you know, and that's fine. But she's 60-40. She trends towards toxicity. She almost got put in gutter creatures. But I, I just couldn't do it. I've played with too many delightful Kates to put her there. So, you know what, okay, Kate? You get 50-50. Don't complain about it. You're not underrated. That's for sure. And you're not the best of the rest. And you're not best, boy. Don't. And you're not tap either. So, 50-50 uh, picks for you. Next up, I actually have to check my notes because I couldn't remember where I put this one. Uh, Feng Min, 50-50. Uh, you know, Feng is another one who trends towards the toxic. In fact, you know, we're going to put Feng up here and David. We're going to put them both up here in 50-50 because I find the same thing with them. That the vast majority of them for whatever reason, tend to be very altruistic. And altruism is not toxic in and of itself. That is not, it's not toxic in and of itself. It's how confident this altruistic survivor is that ultimately decides it. Overall, I feel like most of them, I, I'd say, again, about half of them have really good intentions. They just want to be really helpful. And then you do have those that want to be, uh, they, they, they want to be, they want to be really, really, uh, bold, I suppose. And they get all kinds of toxic and I'm not here for it. So next up we have the character, the character that gave me the most pause in deciding where to put her, Jane Romero. I consider best of the rest. I considered saying she was a 50-50 pick, and I considered saying she was a gutter creature. Which to me, if I'm having that much pause, means the obvious thing is to put her in 50-50 picks. I do not hate Jane. In fact, I like Jane. But there is no doubt that a lot of very obnoxious people play Jane. And I'm not sure why that is, but I've gotten to the point where I see a Jane... And I say, oh, this is this is probably going to be a very confident survivor. A very... Uh... <laughs> and confident is the nice way of saying they're going to be an ass. Uh, let's, let's go on and clarify that, right? I think it might have to do with the fact that, uh, that she has head-on, which is kind of a cheeky exhaustion perk. You know, and it's, it's one of the few ways you get to fight back against the killer. Uh, and actually, like, calls the... You can jump scare the killer. Uh, so, I, I think that must be... That must be what it is. That's the... That's the only thing I can reason. That's the only reason I can figure that people have taken this really cool character 
uh, and made her like she, or maybe it's because her backstory, she's a journalist and journalists are just, uh, the gutter creatures of real life. I don't know. It's one or the other, but either way you get a 50, 50 pick. I like you, Jane. I just wish, I actually wish she, she was less played. So I could just put her in underrated gems and leave it there, but she, she's not next up. We have the gutter creature who I am on a crusade to teach other people is a gutter creature. That being Nancy freaking freaking wheeler man i ugh, nancy I, every time i see a nancy in my lobby i'm like you're gonna be the toxic one you're gonna have decisive strike you're going to have fixated and you're going to have sprint burst you're going to have bt and you might not even have fixated you might bring unbreakability you're gonna have all the second chance perks you're gonna teabag at the pallets nancy i don't get it have you not watched the show this is not how she is even though she did do steve dirty No love for Nancy. No love for Nancy. And that's a damn shame. That's a damn shame, but no love for Nancy. Next up, we have Zarina Kassir. She was our final one of the tier list. Uh, quick, uh, you know, you, you just guess where she's going to go. Guess where she's going to go. If you get it wrong, you got to leave a like on the video. And that's right. She goes in David Tap. Yeah, that's right. Zarina goes in the David Tap category. Uh, and so that's that I'm not going to explain it any further, but thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you had a good time. I hope that you were, uh, you were down to do some, some, uh, I guess some mamaze with us here. Uh, obviously this was not to be taken seriously, but it was also gospel. And if you don't believe it, that's a you problem. <laughs> uh, I will see you whenever I put another video out, hopefully sometime this year. You would, you, I mean, I'm running out of time. It's November as I record this, but uh, thank you so much foodies. I love you. And until next time, bye foodies. <laughs>